and welcome to H2O Stream. My name is Sean and I'm the editor at H2O Global News. I'm joined today by TJ Strobel. He's the technical marketing leader at Curita America. TJ, it's great to have you over. Hi, Sean. Thanks for having me. It's a real pleasure. Um, I think we could kind of kick off the, the discussion today. Uh, just tell me a little bit more about yourself and everyone that's watching uh, about your role and also also about the company, Carita America. Yeah, I'll start off talking a little bit about Carita America. So we're part of the Carita Group. And Carita is one of the largest and oldest water treatment providers in the world, actually based out of Japan. And we're best known for our innovative technologies and our commitment to research and development. And we actually just opened a new innovation hub in Tokyo. And that acts as our global center for R&D and also as um, really our global center for knowledge exchange throughout the different groups globally. We've got a broad range of capabilities that kind of crosses around chemical, equipment products, um, and we have a strong process and engineering knowledge. This allows us to offer unique solutions to our customers. So Korea America operates in many sectors. We're in biofuels, food and beverage, semiconductors, power commercial, healthcare facilities, and in the municipal drinking water sector too. So it's the cool thing about Korea America, it's not uncommon for us to treat the same water at multiple times as it's used within a community by different customers at, at many different levels. So about me, I'm in the Minneapolis area, and that's actually where Create America's headquarters are based, but I'm also from the area. I've got my chemical engineering degree at the University of Minnesota. Um, I've been in the industry for 15 years now. I started at Tonka Water, which is a legacy company, and it remains our brand in the municipal market. So I've got a strong background in process treatment for municipal drinking water, but my current role in marketing is focused on equipment for all sectors, and I've been involved in more industrial applications now. And I'm also an active member of the American Water Works Association, or AWWA. I'm on their board of directors, and I, I'm the chair of their Manufacturers and Associates Council, the MAC, which is specific to service provider members of AWWA. Okay, great. Thanks so much, TJ, for that overview. Um, so from the previous discussions that we've had, I know that Curie to America recently published an ebook focused on water reuse in the industrial sector. Um, so can you tell us a little bit more about this ebook and what drove you to showcase water reuse? Yeah, in, in general, we've seen that industry is under greater stress and they're facing growing risk around water. And this is whether because of uncertain source water availability or quality, or maybe more stringent discharge requirements or increasing costs associated with, with that. Um, so water treatment needs for our industrial customers and also our municipal, are they're evolving and they're requiring unique solutions that expand beyond specific unit processes and really require the consideration of the interconnectedness of their entire water system. So I mentioned Carita's broad capability, and that's really what led us to focus on water reuse because it's a good application of all of our technologies from chemistry to equipment, and it requires a strong process knowledge across the board to implement. So water reuse, um, it's one way that we can provide this total solution and generate unique, uh, unique value for our customers. So the ebook's really meant as a basic overview of some of the things that industrial facility might consider when looking into reuse as a way to help conserve water. Okay, thanks, TJ. Um, there's a lot to unpack there, but something you specifically mentioned was that customer needs are evolving. Um, can you explain a bit more about how industrial water reuse applications differ from traditional water treatment solutions? Yeah, so a traditional solution might focus on one unit process. So generally in water treatment, the first priority is to protect the equipment. So this might be preventing corrosion or scaling in a boiler system. And after you protect the equipment first and foremost, now you, you might look to optimize the water use. So this might be adding, maybe you're adding treatment uh, to the boiler water feed to, to increase the cycles in the boiler and minimize the water need in general. Now customers are asking how to, how to take the waste that's produced and recover it and use it elsewhere in the plant. So this is now connecting the unit process to other unit processes. So if, if you're taking waste from one process, treating it through your reuse system and now using that elsewhere in the plant. Now these are all uh, intertwined. Um, so the, the reuse solutions, you know, they kind of range in basic to advanced, but 
they're going to require the integration of multiple water treatment solutions, generally equipment and chemistry, as they increase increase in complexity. Um, so to meet the growing need and evolve with our customers here, Create America, we use a total solutions approach that integrates our core strengths of chemistry, equipment, engineering, and services or service um, to create unique solutions that maximize value for our customers. And to understand the value of reuse in an industrial facility, um, including the business case for reuse, you really need to understand the greater impact on the surrounding community and the dynamic with local water resources and public infrastructure. So we're even going outside of the facility, which is actually our ultimate aim at Carita, to create shared value with society through the solutions that we deliver to our customers. That's fantastic. Thanks for that, uh, TJ. You, you mentioned the the greater impact that water reuse projects can have on the surrounding community. And I know that Carita's ultimate aim is to create value for society. Um, so could you talk a bit more about the bigger picture of, of water reuse, um, of water use, sorry, at varying levels? Um, for example, at an industrial facility versus agriculture versus public drinking water. How water use at these different levels within a community or even regionally or globally, how do they interact and how do they impact one another? Um, and moreover, how can we help these different water users better understand their greater impact and work together um, essentially to create a more sustainable society? Yeah, yeah, I mentioned Carita's focus is to create shared value with society through the impact of the solutions that we deliver to our customers. And together we'll make a more sustainable society. And the reuse market and the need for reuse is growing in the municipal space, um, but it's taking time to work through the regulatory side. So while that's going on, there's an immediate opportunity among industry where these solutions can be implemented for non-contact or non-potable industrial water use. So there's less risk to public health and therefore requires less regulatory oversight. So talking about shared value, the, the municipal sector can also share the value from these projects since they reduce the impact on public infrastructure by using less water resources and also reducing the waste burden. So there's more over overlap between industrial and municipal sectors as the water industry embraces a one water concept. And many industrial facilities have partnered, actually partnered with municipal water, wastewater plants to implement reuse without full wastewater treatment on site. So you can think of it as outsourcing their reuse treatment. So these facilities are getting partially or fully treated municipal wastewater, which they can use as is or treat it to a higher purity on site, depending on the need. So this, it's an alternative water source and it often comes at a discount and it also adds a revenue stream for the utility. So that scenario demonstrates an important aspect of water reuse and that fundamentally the implementation of water reuse forces recognition that water is a shared resource and also is one also forces recognition of one's impact on that shared resource. So more businesses are understanding their impact on water resources, as well as the critical role that water plays in their survival. So if they're not good water stewards, they're going to be held accountable one way or another, whether through bottom line profits or reputation or maybe regulation. Um, so there's an organization called Water Resilience Coalition or WRC and CREAT is actually a founding member and they, the WRC is a CEO led initiative and it calls for corporations to take action to preserve the world's fresh water resources with a strategic focus on water stressed basins. So members also push for a water resilient value chain by promoting water resilience down throughout their supply chain. So this is another example of ways that we can all work together to help things on a global scale. And one other point I want to make, I am a member and involved in AWWA. I, I think that water associations like AWWA are really critical to getting everyone aligned on certain issues so we can move together in a beneficial way as an industry. So these organizations can connect stakeholders at all different levels. So even, even if we have competing priorities on a micro scale, we can all move in the same direction on a macro scale. And the more we're aligned, the more we'll see a positive impact. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, and especially you know, the, with the with the Water Resilience Coalition business led, actually taking a lead on a resource that is, is integral to everything. Like you say, whether it's your business bottom line or, or, or just basic survival and societal well-being, obviously water is one of the most um, important resources on planet Earth, if not the one. I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's arguable. Um, 
So before we wrap up, is there anything else that you'd like to add? Uh, anything that we haven't covered? Yeah, one more thing I'd like to emphasize is that water issues are, are very local and regional. So we need to recognize that some regions don't share the same stresses as others do. And I think this is really important, especially when discussing net zero goals or net positive, where companies might offset their use by replenishing water resources. Um, it's critical that companies examine their local impact and return the water where it's most needed. And this is why WRC specifically focuses on water stressed basins. And another local phenomenon is a matter of scale, really. There, there are some communities where one or two industrial facilities are the majority water users and waste generators. So they're very closely tied to public infrastructure. So this can cause a conflict if a company wants to adjust their water use. So think, think of a facility whose, water, whose wastewater amounts to a majority of the municipal influent in the community. If they cut their waste even by a quarter, this will mean a significant loss of revenue to the utility. Um, they'd probably also use less water, which likely comes from the municipality. So it's another loss in revenue. So the utility might respond by raising their water rates, and this is going to affect the economic balance of the reuse project. So again, it's critical to understand the impact at the community level. And on the other hand, though, um, utilities that are struggling with capacity issues, they can actually benefit by calling on industry to take on more of the burden to help balance the needs for maintenance and expansion. So because of the, because of the impact of these types of solutions, we need to take a contextual approach and get different stakeholders at the table. Um, Create America works at multiple levels within a community that I mentioned, both in private industry and the public and municipal sector. And that, that gives us a unique perspective on the interplay between our different clients and how we can help one client by helping another. So this goes back to our ultimate goal of creating shared value with society and asking how solutions are benefiting the bigger picture and helping to create a more sustainable society. Ultimately, society benefits as we all work together to share our water resources and protect them for the long term. Yeah, definitely. Um, couldn't agree more, TJ. And especially on your point of, of contextual, uh, context-specific solutions, obviously, the way people interact with water, um, the way they're impacted by water-related risks, it, it varies acro across regions. And I think that's why it's so important that companies like Curita America are taking the lead on the conversation, um, really raising awareness throughout private, public, uh, private sector, as well as at the individual level. So thanks so much for the chat today. It's been really illuminating about the work that you're doing but also kind of more broadly, the, the, the issues that, that we're facing, the challenges, but how we can come together to, to really um, pay the way um, to future-proof the water sector. Uh, TJ, thanks so much for joining me. And um, For sure, well. thanks. Yeah, thank you, Sean. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it. a, it's a pleasure having you. Um, to all our viewers out there, um, we're going to put uh, the details of Truth to America at the end of this video. So if you'd like to find out a bit more about what they do, uh, feel free to get in touch. But otherwise, thanks for tuning in and have a great day. Mm -hmm.